Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? It's Jeff. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing okay today. Um, today, uh, it's really nice out here in Maine. It's uh, sunny and uh, very few clouds out there. Um, uh, it's uh, like, like in the 80s, I guess. So it's it's pretty nice, really nice out, and uh, good weather for for enjoying a Sunday afternoon somewhere. Um, uh, kind of uh, wish I had like a little boat or something like that take it out on the lake <laughs> uh, I used to have one but uh, I got rid of it because it was uh, too much for me to handle <laughs> too big and I just needed something smaller but I haven't gotten got one yet that is uh, to my needs um, anyway I wanted to talk about uh, Alec Baldwin uh, today and I uh, because there's an article that come out here about him uh, recently here that uh, from the AP that's talking about um, the trial that he's going to be going to here pretty soon um, <clears throat> so I want to read this here first and then I'll comment on it uh, written by Andrew Dalton uh, and it says here, uh, nearly three years after cinematographer uh, Helena Hutchins was shot and killed on the New Mexico set of the film Rust, Alec Baldwin is going on trial over her death. Here are the essential things to know. The actor is about to enter a New Mexico courtroom for the first time since the October the 21st, 2021 shooting. 2021, Christ, has it been that long ago? It seems like yesterday, but... Now it's been three years. He is charged with felony involuntary manslaughter. If a jury unanimously convicts him, he could get 18 months in prison. Baldwin, the star and co-producer of the Western, was pointing a revolver at Hutchins during a rehearsal in a small church on the movie set at Bonanza Creek Ranch when the gun went off, killing her and wounding director Joel Soiza. I guess that's how you say it. Baldwin uh, has said he pulled back the hammer, but not the trigger, and the gun fired. Two major themes will predominate, one large, one small. Uh, the chaotic atmosphere of the movie set and the details of the Italian-made classic revolver that Baldwin pointed at Hutchins. It has never been officially determined who brought the live rounds that killed Hutchins onto the set. Prosecutors at the previous trial of Rust, armorer Hannah Gutierrez Reed, alleged that she was responsible. She was convicted of involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to the same 18 months in prison that Baldwin faces. But the jurors must decide. Prosecutors have two alternative standards for proving the charge. One is based on the negligent use of a firearm. The other is proving beyond a reasonable doubt that Baldwin acted with total disregard or indifference for the safety of others. Despite the legal and technical complexities of the case, the 12 citizens of Santa Fe County that will make up the jury will have to reach just one verdict, guilty or not guilty, on a single count. 
uh, the trial at the first judicial district court of New Mexico, about 20 miles northeast of the movie set and the shooting, is projected to last about nine days, and Judge Mary Marlowe Summer insists that she'll keep the lawyers in line and on schedule. Jury selection begins Tuesday with opening statements expected Wednesday and the projected end the following Friday. Once the jurors get the case, however, they can deliberate as long as needed. So they're expecting the, the, the whole thing probably to last about two weeks, I guess, and then however long it takes the jury to, uh, to decide after that. So it's not going to be long. And <clears throat> so the reason why I wanted to talk about this uh, is that, uh, okay, the first thing is, the armorer, okay, Gutierrez, I guess, is that how you say her name? I'm trying to remember because it's some. Um, yeah, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, okay. She was the armorer on the set, which, which means she made sure that the props that were used on the set are safe, okay. Um, and this particular prop that was handed to Baldwin was supposed to be safe for him to use, okay, which means no live rounds in the revolver, just blanks, okay, just blanks. Now, uh, it was said in that, in, in that trial pertaining to her, which she got convicted, that actors rarely ever check these things when they're handed these, uh, the revolvers, or the guns rather, okay, they, they rarely ever check to make sure. They just trust that the armorer knows what they're doing because, hey, these people work for money, they earn it, right? <laughs> they better know what they're doing, okay? So they they trust them that what they're getting. Now some actors will check, okay? Because uh, you know they might have weapons of their own, and they just uh, they live by a certain you know model that you know you just uh, you know always make sure that these things are safe, okay? And that's a good thing to live by. If you're if you're a gun owner, yeah, you want to you, you know you have you should learn that habit. But if you're not and you're an actor like Baldwin and you probably don't have any guns at home or something like that, then you put the faith and the trust in them to make sure that what they're giving you is safe because, hey, you know, uh, you probably don't know <laughs> how to check and make sure it is safe, okay? They're, they're trying to teach you how to pretend, okay? Pretend to handle that gun, to pretend to know that you know how to use it. But sometimes it's good to not pretend but to actually know. But there's no rule or any law that says that they have to, okay? It's just a what do you call it, you know, just a, a, a something, a wise thing to live by, I guess, you know, but it's not, it's not a, a rule that's uh, enforced by any law that, you know, can get you in trouble or put you in prison for it. Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, she accepted the responsibility that, you know, she handed him a loaded gun. So, in other words, she, you know, saying, yes, I am guilty of that, and so she's doing her time for it. As far as I'm concerned, that's the end of the case. That really is where the fault goes. Because to go after Alec Baldwin for pick, for taking that weapon or that prop from her and, and uh, you know, rehearsing to see how, he, how the director wants him to hold it or something, you know, you know, just to get the scene set up just so, right? Uh, okay, uh, he's more, he's, you know, he's got, if, as an actor, he doesn't, he shouldn't have to worry about what he's using is gonna, excuse me, what he's using is going to go off and kill somebody, okay? He's trying to follow the director, and it's not the director's responsibility to make sure that that prop is safe either. Okay, again, that's the responsibility of one person. It's like when I was in the military, everybody did their part and everybody was trusted to do their part. If something didn't go right, they know exactly who to blame. <laughs> okay, because there's a, there, was a, there was a system in place where, you know, everything does their part. Work as a team, they do their part, okay? You can't blame the whole for the actions of one, okay? Every person does their part. Okay, it's the same thing on a movie set. Everyone is hired to do their job. And if you try to do their job, they're gonna get mad at you and say, you stay the hell away from me, this is my job. Hey, you don't wanna get involved with some union or something like that because you're micromanaging their fucking work, okay? So you let them do their job because that's what they're paid to do, all right? Because they don't want their 
you know, somebody tampering with what they're doing and then that leads to a problem. Then they're the ones that's going to have to take the blame for somebody who fucked behind your back and did something that they weren't supposed to do. All right? That's that's protection. You see, you know, liability cases on a movie set are really, you don't want that because they're working on a budget and that's all they got. And if, you, and if something goes wrong, a liability case just wipes that out. Nobody wants to be responsible for that, which is why there's a lot of unwritten rules, unofficial rules in a movie set. They don't want to make too many official rules because then that opens the studios up for a lot of liability cases if things don't happen the way they're supposed to. They don't want that, okay? So, back to, to Alec Baldwin. Given a prop that had loaded rounds in it, Okay, real, real round. It was really loaded with real bullets. How those bullets got there, they even said in the article, they still don't know how they got there. To me, that's an important thing to know. Because if you're going to look for somebody to blame, the armorer is one. She says those bullets were in there and didn't know it, so she didn't check the thing to make sure that that thing was safe to be used. But somebody put loaded, put real bullets in that fucking revolver. Okay, why did that happen? Who did it? I think that's important to know too because they should be sitting 18 months, you know, uh, behind bars too, whoever did that. But of course, nobody's saying anything. They're all looking to dump the whole load on on this one individual who was, was hired to make sure these things are responsible, yeah. But in this instance, uh, you know, other people were involved. She's claiming that, hey, I don't know how those bullets got in there, you know. She checked it before it was fine, and all of a sudden now there's real bullets in there. Somebody put them in there. If she didn't do it, who did? They not, they can't, you know, are they, did they bother to investigate further on that? I don't know. Uh, so because there's a lack of information or, or evidence to show that that even happened, so the armorer has to take the blame. The armorer has to take the blame, okay? And so she did, you know. Uh, but Alec Baldwin... Is uh, okay. Let me let me put it like this: Some guy brings a fucking piano on the fiftieth floor of a building. He pushes it out the fucking window, and the piano lands on a baby at the bottom on the street. Now, can prosecute the guy that pushed the piano out the window, but are you going to go after the piano because it fell on the baby? That's, the, that's what I'm seeing here when I'm looking at Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin is the piano, okay? He was only doing what he'd done in many movies that he acted in before, okay? And rightfully trusted the people on the set to do their job correctly. How can you fault him for doing what he always did in movies and never had this problem happen? This is the only fucking time in his career that this ever happened. Does this sound like a guy who would have taken that thing and intentionally tried to shoot somebody with it? No! Of course not. So, it was an accident. It was an accident because he was given something that he had faith and the armorer had done her job to give him a safe prop. And it wasn't. Okay? How can you fault him for that? It's like putting something on a conveyor belt and the damn thing falls off the end because there was nobody at the end to pick it up. You know, how, how, how is that his fault? He took for granted that the thing was safe, and the armor didn't give him a safe weapon. She is the one at fault, okay? She is the one at fault, and she took the blame for it. If she had, if she had checked that prop before she handed it to him and saw that that, oh, wait a minute, there's real, re gotta take that out. If she'd have done that, this never would have happened, okay? <clears throat> The, the cinematographer would still be alive. The director would be fine. None of this would have happened. Alec Baldwin, okay, would, it, would have continued making this movie. It had been done in the theater already, okay? But because she let him have this thing, this prop, and put it in his hand, okay, and he did what, what an actor does, okay, rehearsal, let's, let's make sure that we set this up right, you know, point the gun here so because we want a good camera angle, Okay, what are you going to do? Tell the director, oh, you're not allowed to point the gun. How are you going to do a movie where you're not allowed, where the director's not allowed to s film certain things, okay? I mean, come on. You can't, you can't control a set like that. 
Movies are made at the discretion <coughs> of the director, how they're set up and everything. Take that out of their hand, they're gonna have a fit and a half. Okay, no, everybody on that set had a job. And they wanna say, well, Alec Baldwin brought chaos to the set. Really? If that's true, then why is there well, only this, uh, why, is she, why is this the armorer here, the one that couldn't, didn't do her job right? Everybody else seemed to do theirs. Why was she the one that uh, fucked up and, you know, sounds to me like, you know, pretty much everybody was doing what they were supposed to be doing, but the people handling the props, they weren't doing their job right, okay? And yes, Baldwin is a producer. You could go after him on a civil case, maybe. That would be the more appropriate ground, I think, to to go after him on because he didn't intentionally try to kill anybody it just was an accident that happened now because he was a boss all right and he should have been uh had you know more hands-on make sure everything was done right uh and an actor as well i mean he, he had a lot to do there so you know he had to trust that people could do their job without having to micromanage everything okay uh, you can definitely go after him for a civil case, you know, monetary damage and say, you know, because, you know, you weren't very good at a, being a boss, you know, you should, you know, uh, suffer some of the con consequences because you were the boss of the armorer and, and look what she did. So, yeah, he, you know, a civil case, I could see that being a, a more logical approach to going after Alec Baldwin. But for involuntary manslaughter, I mean, involuntary manslaughter is when you're driving a car and you accidentally hit somebody, okay? Now, a car can't be defanged and made safe for the road. It all depends on the fucking driver driving that car, whether that car person driving is alert, okay, not drunk, <laughs> not on drugs or whatever the hell, so they can't concentrate on the road, not on their cell phone, okay? And, uh, and that the driver did not intentionally veer the vehicle at the person to kill him, because then that wouldn't be in, involuntary. That would just be manslaughter. That's involuntary manslaughter. What happened on the set of Rust is not involuntary manslaughter. And as a juror, I, could not, I couldn't convict him on that, okay? I couldn't say he's guilty for involuntary manslaughter, okay? Because he wasn't the only one driving the car, as, it, as, as they say, okay? He was the passenger in the car, and the armorer was the one driving it, okay? And uh, he was given that, that prop that wasn't safe, and the goddamn thing was, was loaded. I mean, it's like uh, the driver giving him the car, knowing that it was uh, flawed in some way, and he goes off driving, thinking there's nothing wrong with it, and something happens, and the car uh, crashes into somebody. Okay, yeah, there's blame to go around, but in a civil case, you can do that. You can blame around, you know, pick off everybody that was responsible that led up to the, to the tragedy. And certainly in the armorer's case, in, uh, <coughs> uh, she gets 18 months in prison for that uh, because she was negligent, okay, and you can't say Alec was negligent because there are no rules that suggest that an actor has to check the, the props that he's given or that she's given to make sure they're safe to use. That's not their responsibility, okay? Now, if you start uh, looking at all the things that went on on the set of Rust, and apparently there's, there was a lot of talk about certain things that were going on that they didn't think was right, okay? Let's bring that out then. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about all those things that, you know, everybody has said that, you know, you know they, they were kind of goofing off and all this stuff. Okay, to me that says that there's not enough rules on a movie set. Okay, that there should be some, uh, there should be a, a stricter discipline on a set to avoid uh, complications, to avoid disasters, okay? Um, and apparently there isn't enough. But I can tell you why there isn't a whole lot of rules on a movie set. It's because studios don't want to be found liable for any problems that come up. All right, the, the fewer rules there are, 
okay, then the less chance someone's going to break them. And if they're broken and it leads to a disaster, then guess who gets sued for that? That's why the, a lot of these things are run in a haphazard fashion. This movie, the set of Rust, is no different than any other movie set that's ever been. Look at James Cameron. How many people, <laughs> all the shit that James Cameron put his actors through and, you know, and how they felt after the movie's done. Okay, it's, it's a, it's a, it goes all the way back to the 50s, to the early days of Hollywood. When they're, when they're working on a time slot, when the things have to be done within a certain timetable to be finished, there's always going to be commotion to hurry up, hurry up, let's get it going, going. We got to get, we can't leave here until this scene is shot, no matter how many takes we have to do. Okay, that happens all the time on movie sets. So that means, you know, if you put rules in the way, that's just going to slow things down more. Okay, and studios don't like that either. So, you know, there's like, there's like, uh, what do you call it? unofficial rules that people go by on these sets, but they're not enforced. Okay, some things are enforced. But there's a lot of rules that, that are there that aren't enforced. Certainly they don't want amateurs doing handling things like the weapons, the props, and stuff that are deadly, that could be deadly or made deadly. They don't want amateurs handling that shit, okay? That's why a lot of times you'll see people that are studying to be to make movies, uh, these people, they'll work hand in hand just to gain some experience and knowledge, you know? They're, they're just apprentices and stuff like that. They work there. But they're not given total fucking control, okay? Because they're just learning. They haven't earned, you know, their stripe to be able to do that, okay? <coughs> so, you know, they understand the, the importance of making, keeping things safe, you know? Uh, but in this case, like I said, with Alec Baldwin, going after him for involuntary manslaughter is, is trying to lay blame on the piano that fell on the baby. Okay, and ignoring the fact that it was pushed out a window. Okay, the thing is, you, you, you just, you can, you know, a civil case, yeah, you, you could say, well, you know, he was the boss, and, you know, he should be responsible for the funeral costs, or whatever the fuck, you know, whatever you want to put money, monetary damages for, whatever, okay, uh, he should get some kind of a, a penalty for that. But that's as far as it should go. No prison time. That's not going to solve anything. Okay, there's already a person doing prison which I think deserves it more than he does. Because he, he was just an actor at that moment. He was being the actor, not the producer, but he was being the actor to do his part in the film. And it was a rehearsal. Okay? So, like I said, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like Alec Baldwin, okay? I, I know where that comes from, okay? Um, but if you're just gonna do these cases like that based on emotion or an opinion of somebody, okay, then don't stay the hell out of it, okay? Because, you know, that's what ruins the judicial system is when people have an agenda and they go into these things and they wanna see somebody hang for something because they don't like them. Even if the person didn't do it, oh, let's go get them anyway. Let's lay as much blame on him and see him in prison so we can uh, gawk and laugh at him. <coughs> okay, that's not justice. That ain't fucking justice. And if that's what you're into here with Alec Baldwin, then stay the hell out of the conversation because I don't want to hear it. I only want to talk about the logics of it. That's it. Because as a, as a, uh, I'm not a juror, but if I'm going to think like a juror, that's the way you got to think as a juror. You can't let emotion override your judgment. You gotta look at this thing at all angles and say, you know, this is not, this is not the kind of case he should be faced with here. This is not, this is not a criminal thing like this. You know, a liability case, yeah. But he didn't intentionally kill anybody and this was a set, you know, make-believe. This was pretend, this was all fucking pretend, okay? He didn't go there hoping to kill somebody. Okay, he was given a web uh, prop that he thought was safe, and the fucking thing wasn't. It wasn't his fault. He was just as surprised as everybody else was, you know. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, let's go to a commercial break. We'll come back. <laughs> This is me. 
This is me. Curtis, I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins, I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. time are feeling the pressure the pressure to vote for the party to toe the line to pull the lever the way you always did before maybe the way your parents did too it used to make sense it used to be easy because it used to be the party that said character mattered the party that was for the family the party that believed in the vision of the founders the party of law and order the party of rugged individualism the party that would never vote for a criminal but with or without the verdict, we all knew that's exactly what Donald Trump is, a criminal. When did conservative values become about one man? When did faith go from looking upward to looking the other way? Donald Trump doesn't represent the party of Lincoln. He's not the inheritor of Reagan's legacy. Donald Trump is a virus that has torn our party to shreds. It's time to save the Republican Party by voting against it. Charlottetown coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th and St. John November 20th through the 26th.
another article here from the AP uh, worth talking about. Uh, <clears throat> and I consider this, you know, something more positive than the usual negative trope that I <laughs> get on in the week. Um, House Democrat is proposing a constitutional amendment to reverse Supreme Court's immunity decision by Lisa Mascaro. A leading House Democrat is preparing a constitutional amendment in response to the Supreme Court's landmark immunity ruling seeking to reverse the decision, quote, and ensure that, <coughs> excuse me, that no president is above the law, unquote. Representative Joseph Morello of New York, the top Democrat on the House Administration Committee, sent a letter to colleagues informing them of his in intent to file the resolution which would kickstart what's traditionally a cumbersome amendment process. Quote, this amendment will do what SCOTUS failed to do, prioritize our democracy, unquote, Morelli said in a statement to AP and, ref and referring to Donald Trump. Morelli said, the former president, quote, must be held accountable for his decisions. I urge my colleagues to support my amendment and stand with me on the front line to protect our democracy, unquote. It's the most significant legislative response yet to the decision this week from the court's conservative majority, which stunned Washington and drew a sharp dissent from the court's liberal justices, warning of the perils to democracy, particularly as Trump seeks a return to the White House. Still, the effort stands almost no chance of succeeding in this Congress. Writing for the majority, Chief Justice John Roberts said that presidents have broad immunity from criminal prosecution for actions uh, take within their official duties, a decision that throws into doubt the Justice Department's case against Trump, including his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Trump and his allies celebrated the ruling by the court, which includes three justices appointed by the former president, and his legal team immediately moved to delay sentencing for his felony conviction in an unrelated hush money case in New York State Court that had been scheduled for next week. The judge agreed to push off the sentencing until fall. The outcome all but ensures that federal cases against Trump will not be resolved before the November election, when he faces a likely rematch with President Biden. While the constitutional amendment process would likely take years and in fact may never come to fruition, supporters believe it is the most surefire way, even beyond a new law, to enshrine the norm that presidents can face consequences for their actions. Quote, this amendment will guarantee that no public officer of the United States, including the president, is able to evade the accountability that any other American would have to face for violating our laws, unquote. Morelli wrote in a letter to colleagues this week. He quoted from Justice Sonia Sotomayor, who led the dissent, and Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson, who joined in dissenting, before summing up his own words, quote, presidents are citizens, not tyrants, unquote. <coughs> Another Democrat, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said on Monday she planned to file articles of impeachment against the justices over the ruling which she said represents, quote, an assault on American democracy, unquote. Quote, it is up to Congress to defend our nation from this authoritarian capture, unquote. Ocasio-Cortez said on social media, quote, I intend on filing articles of impeachment upon our return, unquote. Congress can launch the constitutional amendment process and then send it to the states for ratification. Such a resolution takes two-thirds vote in both the House and the Senate, which is highly unlikely at this time of divided government in ratification by three-fourths of the states. So far, there have been 27 amendments to the U.S. Constitution. So, yeah, there's, there's a, a momentum building to push back the Supreme Court. And despite how unlikely it is that they're going to get anything uh, done on these things yet, it uh, doesn't mean they shouldn't try, okay? They should try. 
they should be vigilant about that and, and push until it gives. You know, and you know, every, you know, if anything is won easily, it was never worth the fight. But this is not going to be an easy victory for the Democrats, but the steps have to be taken now. And, and I think that this was, this was a good way to do this by the book. Now, the other side, of course, is going to push back uh, outside the book, as they always do, uh, to make their point. But if they have to go outside the book to justify what they've done, then they've already lost the argument. Because how can they defend themselves uh, with logic and reason and in the American way if they have to step outside the bounds of what's ethical to get their way? You know, I can't, I just... It should be it should be plainly obvious to people like you and I uh, who have a brain at least to understand common sense and you know and it should be simple to know that hey these people you know they did they they did a fucking leapfrog over the justice system to get their way and you know it, had they gone through the the system as it as it is they never would have got there they never would have been able to do this abortion ban thing or this overturn of Roe because the majority of the country doesn't want it. The majority of Americans have always been on the side for the right to an abortion. Always. And that's stuck in their fucking side for decades. They couldn't live with that. They they got they were so mad they were bombing fucking abortion clinics. We, we remember all that. Killing doctors, you know, who gave abortions. I mean these people were livid. It's like a it was it was like a cult mentality over that even. Okay? And when these people can't get their way, that's what they resort to, violence. Um, we should have we should have been more uh, heavy-handed with them in those days, you know. Uh, we should have really done <coughs> done more to to qu quash that that stupid, you know, <coughs> our way or the highway kind of thinking. But we we just let it go on. We just pick the branches off the. The, the sick root that was in the ground. We didn't really go after the root, the root cause of why that's happened, why that, why those things went on. Okay, because there was a lot of, a lot of right wing hate, demagoguery, and propaganda uh, pushing things like that to happen. And when it happened, oh, we weren't at fault. No, no, we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that guy was a nut. Okay, but in the back of their minds, they're like, you know, happy that it happened. Okay, we know that, but. This is the way they are. And it should have been obvious way back then that, you know, the right wing just is not the party to be put in responsibility for anything because they have their own agenda and they're only going to want that. They're not going to listen to all the other people's lives and stories and anything because to them, everything is black and white. You know, there is no gray in their, in their thinking. People that can't can't think in between like that they can't be politicians because life is not black and white is it every every single issue that we've got to deal with here as a country has shades of gray in it and if you ignore that you're ignoring a good swath of the country and what they think now, how can you gain a majority of support for anything if you don't include the gray in there as well <laughs> okay that's why the right wing is always on the minority on a lot of issues because they don't they don't accept the gray. You either agree with them or you're out. That might make them strong as a as a minority group, but they can never get the majority. Okay, that's why they're focusing on electoral votes uh, for this uh, presidential campaign than they are the popular vote. They know they're not going to win the popular vote. They can't. There's no way in hell they could get a popular victory, uh, a victory on the popular vote. Their strategy is to find the electors and, and, and campaign in those states that are where they can get the most uh, electoral votes. That's what they want. Okay. Uh, any, other, any other person that's run for president would be would feel kind of uh, cheated if all they got was the electoral votes, but the population just wasn't on your side. Okay, that the majority went to the other person. How can you how can you say that's a victory? It, it might be a technical win on paper, okay, by the numbers, but it, just, it means that you're starting as president being an unpopular president because nobody likes you. <laughs> 
Okay, to me that would hurt. That yeah, I'm president, but now I still got to win the the people. I haven't, I didn't win the people. They don't agree with me. You know. So, uh, like I said, it's it's really uh, telling there that you know that the Democrats because they don't like Trump and because they don't like the Supreme, they, they, I think I don't know. It's probably a, a it'd be a race to see who who's at the bottom uh, closer, either the Supreme Court or Donald Trump. Which which one do you hate the most right now? <clears throat> I would say since Trump isn't the president currently. I would say the Supreme Court is the most hated right now because Trump, all he can do is run his mouth. But the Supreme Court can can do things because they're in their seats of power. And, you know, right now I think it's them that's of more concern to the public right now uh, than Trump because what they're doing, they're doing right now, currently. Trump is just running for the, for the White House, uh, but he's not getting... The popular, uh, the popular vote out there, as it were. Uh, the media says it's neck and neck. I don't buy that for a second. Okay, that's bullshit, horse race crap. Despite how the fucking debate went there last week or the week before. Okay, I still say Biden is is still ahead of, of Trump as far as popularity goes, and it's because of trust. Trust is the the big thing. You can't trust Trump. There's not a time in, in, that I can think of in my mind where I could say, yeah, I trust him to do, do something. I, you know, I just... <laughs> he, everything he promised he was going to do the first time he didn't do, except give those big tax cuts to the rich, which wasn't something he really campaigned on as a, pres as a can uh, you know, candidate. He was talking about walls and how the, the, the Latinos were criminals, and, you know, he was saying all this negative crap, okay? But he didn't do anything about that. That fucking, the, you know, the, the wall or whatever the hell he was talking about, uh, whatever, he, he, part of that kind of went up <coughs> and then it stopped. Mexico didn't pay for a cent of that, which he said they were going to, but they did. Now, he started it and it didn't get finished and now the winds have knocked a lot of it down. Okay, it goes to show you how how feeble that wall would have been anyway, even if he did get it done, because he, it couldn't even stand up to the fucking winds. You know, it fell over. He must have made that damn thing out of toilet paper or something or, <coughs> or whatever. <coughs> it was just a symbol, a symbolic gesture is all that was, just to give voters the sense that, oh, where he cares about the border. Really? As the people are still going <laughs> by you know, across the border, he cares about the border. Yeah, uh, yeah, really, that, it was laughable because he didn't care. And when the issue come up where they, the right could have done something, uh, thanks to Biden, they said, no, we're not voting on that because it ain't you we want to vote this under. It's Trump. We're going to wait for him. This is going to be his victory, not yours. You see what I'm saying? They're being, they're being pig-headed about it. So it means that the problem isn't as big and dominant and dire as they've been making it out to be all these months this year, okay? It's not such a big thing. It's only a big thing for the state of Texas. <laughs> Texas is very intolerable uh, down there, and they don't like seeing more Latinos, brown people coming across their border. Okay? Uh, and they're the ones that's making the fucking noise over this uh nobody else you know uh yeah for a, for a very short time DeSantis was bitching about it but what the hell his state borders the ocean <laughs> what the hell does it matter to him anyway you know but whatever um but it's good to see that you know the democrats you know are coming up with ways to get this going uh and I, I'm hoping that one of the other ways that they want to go after the Supreme Court is by adding more seats on the bench because uh, it's not, <coughs> it's, it, because the population has increased cons, uh, significantly since the time of the, that this thing was formed. You know, uh, we, uh, you know, there's not enough to really represent, you know, America here. 
and they want they should add more more justices on there if they can't get rid of the ones that are there that are causing all the fucking problem okay or you can't slap them back into line as they should be operating under some kind of ethical code maybe maybe they ought to do that maybe they ought to come up with some rules for the Supreme Court to have to live by like okay you know you guys don't have any rules of conduct so we're gonna put rules of conduct on you because every other judge in this country has to so you can't argue that we're being you know uh, vicious or you know judgmental you know what I'm saying you can't argue that we're, we're doing this just because you know we want to we're doing it because hey we got hundreds and hundreds of other fucking judges in this country that have to work under these rules, and you should too. If you're gonna, you know, if you represent justice, and justice has to be fair, then the laws have to be fair too for everybody. If you're a justice, you're gonna have to live by these rules too, because you're a judge. All right, that's fair is fair. All right, so what they ought to do is say we're gonna we're gonna impose some ethical rules on you if you don't like it then you can resign you know leave goodbye you know Clarence Thomas goodbye I think you're old enough to retire now anyway you don't you, your usefulness on the bench is over <laughs> okay you're yesterday what we want in there is tomorrow and and you ain't tomorrow you're just you're just a, an anchor to the past and that's all you bring to the thing is just old ideas uh, and to fit into times that just won't fit in okay and you got a lot of hate in you too for whatever reason you hate this country you know maybe because you didn't like the idea that you know you got in trouble with the need a hill and all that shit you know, okay I hey I don't know I, I read somewhere you you vowed you was gonna get the Democrats back for that shit back then I don't know if this is part of it but you know if if you're going to live your life <clears throat> you know being vengeful and stuff like that then you're of no use to us as a justice okay should resign <coughs> you know how would you like somebody working on your house you have an addition on your house but the person you hire doesn't like you so he does a shitty job so that day one day you open the fucking door and the whole side of the house falls down because he, he said it that way would you feel like oh let them, you know, it's okay. No, you'd want some goddamn payback, wouldn't you? You'd want that guy's license removed. You'd want him off, just not be able to do that job to, for anyone ever again, right? 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 Of course. And we have the same rights to get rid of people who ain't doing their fucking job. That's why we have elections, right? When, when we got a president that ain't doing their job right and has caused more trouble than solved problems vote them out well right now we can't do that with you guys I mean we can't we don't have a voice in who gets to sit in that court and that right there is a, is a problem we should have some say in that you know and uh, like I said if you're gonna be a justice you've got to have some ethics okay we got to be able to trust you to do your job okay and if we see you're acting outside the bounds of what's right and wrong then how can we trust you? We can't. That's why the, your, the trust in the institution is, in, is lower than snake piss right now. Okay, you guys ruined it. You dragged down the three liberal justices in your wake, and now they're, part, they're tied in with the most corrupt justice uh, uh, Supreme Court we've ever had in this country. You know, how do you think that's gonna make them feel? To have their name linked to yours, okay? I wouldn't want to be a justice right now. I mean, right now their voice really doesn't matter a whole lot. They can dissent till the cows come home. But when you other six stand together to get your way for political reasons, then, you know, your credibility, you know, not you only are destroying your credibility, but you're destroying the credibility of the other three. Okay? Because we're not looking at you as a whole anymore. We're looking at you in fractions. The three versus the six. You know, we should be looking at the institution of the Supreme Court as a whole all the time, but we can't because you guys have split, have split that like you, like the Republicans have split this country in half. There's no middle ground anymore in America thanks to the, to the MAGA movement and all the 
shit that encompassed, you know, how we'll ever get this country back together to the middle, I don't know. I really don't know. It's going to take some damn good politicians from here on out to do some serious repair work in this country. And I don't know if that can be done. I really don't know. Because I, I was reading something somewhere where they're talking about that a violent <coughs> um, reprisal uh, by either side, the right or the left, is extremely possible come November, no matter who wins this thing. You know, the presidential election, one side or the other is going to want to push the envelope, just like January 6th. You know, we crossed that road back then, and now it's, it's hard to unring that bell. You know, so like I said, you know, we to, you know, a, a thing like that's only going to further divide the country than it already is, but right now, to bring it back, to do undo that and go the other way, it's going to take a lot, a lot, you know. Uh, I think the only time you could ever bring a whole country together under a single cause is war. And it doesn't have to be war, a civil war, it can be a war like World War II, brought the country together to a single cause where you know people work together as Americans okay in my lifetime 9-11 the after you know after 9-11 brought this country united together despite who we were pol uh, politically leaning we we came together on 9-11 okay that was the only time that I can think of in my lifetime anyway, but in my grandparents' lifetime, World War II was that event. But 9-11 did, did some of the same thing, and, you know, and, you know, even the rest of the world was looking to, to do something to help us, <coughs> you know. So it didn't matter who we were at the time. What we were, I think, we were just responding to that event as human beings that cared, okay, and I think that in order for this divide in our country to heal in some fucking way, we're going to, a big tragedy like that would have to happen. You know, it would take something like that to shoehorn this country back together. Um, and and, and I, I hate to say that because, you know, it, 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 lives are, we lose lives when we have things like that. We really do. But can you think of a way? You know, that we could bring this country back together without something like that happening? You know, I mean, really, is there a way? Could it be, you know, is there a person out there who could be the most perfect president we've ever had that could pull that stunt? I, I don't know. I, I just don't know who could do it. I really don't. You know, because one side or the other is never going to be happy. You know, because they, they so hate the other side. They so hate the other side. It's 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 insane how much they hate the other side, you know. And Democrats are becoming just as much a cult mentality as MAGA now. I've been I'm hearing people all the time talking about, I don't care if Joe Biden is on a respirator or in an iron lung, okay, or or one foot in the grave and yelling banana peel. I'm still gonna vote for Biden. Well, I heard the other side saying that if Donald Trump took a shit in front of everybody on the stage at a at a rally, they'd still vote for him. So you got <laughs> both sides are starting to think like cults now. How more divided can we get from that point? You know, you know what I'm saying? To bring the country back together now would, would cause a fight. And that's why this election coming uh, could lead to a fight, you know, no matter which side wins. Because we so hate each other. You know, I myself, I can't look at anybody that's a Trump supporter. I can't. I don't even want to hear from them if they're a Trump supporter. Okay? That's why I don't talk politics in public. It's like, you know, it's it's like I feel like I'm a, you know, like, okay, well, I can't say it because I don't, I've never, I wouldn't understand. But I just feel like a leper <coughs> going into a restaurant and as long as I keep myself covered I won't draw attention but if I take the the cover off you know so I feel like you know if you talk politics in public you're revealing yourself as a leper you know 
and people are just going to hate you. I, I just I can't do that. I just can't. I can't go out there. I don't even feel safe putting a bumper sticker on my truck that says I'm going to vote for Biden. Because I know if I go out there the next day, there's going to be eggs all over it or someone's going to keep uh, scratch it with a key, okay, or beat it with a dent, you know, do something to my truck, okay, uh, even though it already looks like that it's, uh, you know, been beaten and shoved up to someone's ass anyway, okay, um, it already, I mean, I'm just saying, I can't, I don't, I don't trust people, I'd rather they guess, you know, they figure because when I, you know, I wear a, a, a hat says, you know, a, a veteran's hat or something, they think I'm a Republican because they, for some reason, Republicans think all veterans are Republicans. Well, we're not. Not all of us are. Some of us are Democrats, okay? But I let them believe that I am a, a Trump supporter, even though I totally disagree with everything they stand for, okay? I just let them think that, okay? And if you're watching this video and I just said that and you're surprised, fine. I'm, now you Now you know. I'm not a Trump supporter, okay? Forget it. Don't bother coming to me and saying something nice about him because I don't I don't agree with it. <clears throat> okay, I'm going along here, so I'm going to stop this video here. So please subscribe, comment, and share, and uh, keep your ears open for any any uh, health related matters. And treat each other nice this summer. Make it a good summer uh, before we get we walk back into hell again here this November. So take care, everybody. I'll talk to you later.